Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I have the honor of introducing you to Martin Sharp. He is a multi-award winning international consultant, coach, speaker, and author who helps busy and overweight entrepreneurs, consultants, and business owners obtain their fitness and lifestyle that makes them happier and more confident and the flexibility to continue them to be their best. Martin, so tell us a little about yourself and what you do and let us know more about you. Hi, Stacey, and thanks for uh, having me on the show. It's great oh, to be you're here. you're very welcome. Yeah, so uh, I kind of guess my, my kind of story and the reason why this is so important to me, the passion that comes behind it, uh, starts uh, back in 2014. Uh, and actually, I brought my family over to the States, so over to Florida. Uh, to to have a holiday for three weeks. I, I brought my mum over mainly because she always <laughs> wanted to take me and my brother to to uh, Disneyland. Uh, uh -huh. But as a single parent, she could never afford it. And, and right. my business was doing okay. So I kind of thought, well, why don't I treat her? And so I took her away uh, to spend time with her grandchildren. It's kind of not, not quite her children, but I thought it was nice enough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I we went to, to Florida and went to do all the different theme parks, went to so like, uh, Kennedy Space Center, off to the, the Gulf Coast and everything. Oh, it was beautiful. And anyway, when I was at the Universal Studios, I've got my, my two children in hand. I've got my, it's like my eight-year-old bouncer coming down going, yeah, is it going to be fast? Is it going to be fast? <laughs> and my daughter's going, is it going to be scary? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be fast and scary as we're kind of lying up to, to go on, uh, on one of the rides, the, the incredible Hulk ride it was. And as I got to the front of the ride, the guy goes, um, excuse me, sir, but uh, I, you're not going to fit in these seats. He says, but don't worry, I've got a special car I just made for you. I'm thinking, what? Mm -hmm. So I kind of left to one side, this special car comes down, I tries to get me in the seat, can't get this, this restraint over my head or anything. And I'm thinking, oh my God, and I was really embarrassed and I've got my kids here and everything. Uh, and anyway, thankfully, a friend of mine came with me, Andy, uh, and he took me on the ride. And I kind of went off and slunked off into a corner. I was there, stood with my mum, thinking, oh, God, that was embarrassing. Um, and the thing was, I'd love to say that was the only time that happened during that holiday, but it wasn't. Right. Uh, so it happened a fair few times. And I, I think the big one, though, for me was, we, we, we all, I'm, I'm sure we all do. We've done these great holidays, take lots of photos, right? Right. Uh, and my mum got a photo of myself and my wife on the monorail that comes out of uh, the Magic Kingdom. And uh, I, I, I literally have moobs bigger than my wife's boobs i was and i was shocked and I, and I just looked at it and thought how on earth have i managed to get like this um so i kind of thought right that's it i, I need to make a change i need to do something different so uh i started committed to my wife i said right let's, i'm gonna go back i'm gonna get a gym membership i'm gonna get pt i'm gonna get diet plan all those kind of things right that yeah and I did it. So I got a PT. I got the gym membership. It was PT was a little lady called uh, Kerry, and she kind of had a bouncing around for about an hour every time I'd come away from there. I'd be almost dead. And uh, yeah, I was following a diet plan, tracking everything on my fitness pal. You know, one of those things. Yeah. Uh, and, and have you ever done the my fitness pal thing and looked looked at the values it gives you? Yeah, yeah. It's and you hard. kind of you read a bit around it, and you think, okay, so if a calorie deficit is good, a bigger one's got to be better, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't quite work like that. <laughs> but I didn't know at the time. So yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of going through all this and I spent about a good year, two years doing all that and I wasn't really progressing. So yeah. I was exploring different ideas. So mm -hmm. I kind of went with I did some uh, kickboxing with some friends when I was down in London. And right. uh, my daughter took me to karate. So she enjoyed doing that. She got to hit dad. It was great. <laughs> oh, <but> anyway. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, we just tried all sorts of different diets with my wife as well. We did the the South Beach diet, we did the Weight Watchers thing, we did keto, we did all sorts of things. But actually, I couldn't find a way to shift the weight off my frame. I was just right. still uh, absolutely huge. And I think looking back now, I kind of realized it was a more to do with the lifestyle I had. So being a, a busy consultant i was spending so much time trying to you know build consensus and helping people get the results that they were looking for it would always end in going out for a meal somewhere or yeah. drinks over something or other and you know I, I, I can't even remember half of the lavish dinners and desserts and god knows how much beer i've drunk over the years right um and it, and it takes its toll so 
as good as I was when I was at home, I was dreadful when I was away. And the thing was, I was probably only home for maybe uh, five to seven days a month um, at its peak. And the rest of the time, I'd you know, be off. I'd be in the US, I'd be over in Europe, I'd be in like Asia or somewhere. So it, and the, when you can't have that lifestyle, you suddenly realise actually, how are you going to make this work? And yeah, after five years of trying, and I'd lost about 10 kilos over five years, that's what, uh, 22 pounds or something. Right. So it's not a huge amount. When I was weighing in at uh, 154 kilos, which was 340 pounds. So that's your original uh, weight. That's what you started yeah. with? Yeah, wow. yeah. So it's quite big. And uh, so, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I was just telling my wife, I said, well, that's, this is it, really. It's, this is me. I don't think I'm going to be able to do much about it. And, and she just said, well, don't worry about it. You know, you, you, you're happy. You, you've, you've got a great career. You're respected by your clients and your colleagues. You've got a, a good, loving family around you. We still right. love you and things. And I was thinking, okay, well, that might be the case, but um, it's, it's a bit like staring down the barrel of a gun, though, because I'm not from the best breeding stock. Uh, mm-hmm. If I was a horse, I'm pretty sure I'd be shot by now. <laughs> my... <laughs> so, yeah, my, my dad's got fibromyalgia and diabetes. He's had several bouts of cancer. Oh, my uh, my younger brother, two years younger than me, he's going down the same track, so he's got diabetes yeah. and fibromyalgia. So I was kind of thinking, okay, well, if, if that's the case, we need to enjoy ourselves now because <laughs> you know, there's not many years left right right um, yeah and then that was uh 2019 when i kind of thought oh that's it i'm just gonna give up on this it's not gonna work uh, and chance would happen uh i was at an event down at the felbridge uh, crown plaza hotel near gatwick uh helping out do, doing some uh, speaker training actually of all things and uh we met a chap called pete and he just came over during breakfast time said would you mind if we could join you I said yeah no worries come have some breakfast with us and we got chatting over coffees and things and yeah you know when you see someone and you think that person looks after themselves right because he looked really dapper in his nicely crisp suit yeah he really was well chiseled in his face etc really nice broad shoulders mm-hmm. everything was just perfectly proportionate proportion you think yeah he looks after himself so the kind of conversation turned to to health and fitness, and he's he's a very successful businessman. So he says, "Well, how do you do? How do you manage to fit everything in?" Yeah, and he says, "Well, I, I just got myself an online trainer." He says, "It was so so easy, an online coach." He says, "Because I now can just do it wherever I am, whatever I'm doing." Right. Fantastic! What a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then you would never guess the next thing he said. What? So he goes. My online coach is actually with me here. I invited him to this event. So that oh, he really? His business. It's like, it's wow. Like serendipity. So I'm there with, uh, obviously, Pete and Adam. So Adam's um, he's an ex-bodybuilder, and uh, he's, he loves his stoic philosophy. So it's kind of, if you imagine somebody who's built like a bodybuilder but talks like Marcus Aurelius or something, <laughs> that, that's pretty much Adam. Uh, an interesting concoction, but it's, it's really good to work with in the fact that you know he, he got me to really think about what it is that I really valued in life and yeah. why I valued that and uh it kind of made me think that actually if if I didn't change things in my life because I already knew what the consequences would be right then actually um I wouldn't be able to fulfill my highest values which is you know I wouldn't be able to help my clients do what they need to do right I wouldn't be able to spend time with friends and help my friends do what they want to do and have a laugh usually and and worst of all, I, you know, I probably become a burden to my own family, um, mm-hmm. which would mean I wouldn't be able to help them uh, use me as a, like springboard to become better than what I've ever been. Yeah, I'd actually be dragging them back, and, and and to me that was such a a big and powerful motivating moment that it's kind of stuck with me all the way through it. So that that helped me then change because straight away i could then think okay well how do i call this lot fit in so right obviously the tail goes on i i signed up with adam and we he got me a meal plan an exercise plan and i kind of started to work out things like how can i bring rest and relaxation into my own uh routines right. and things and, and in fact a lot of the stuff i did around business transformations apply to what i was doing because it's all about you know scheduling and monitoring and you know making sure you're prepared for the various things and prepared for when things go wrong and actually yeah. having contingency planning all that kind of stuff all comes into it but no one teaches this type of stuff do they right they think it's just eat less eat you know, eat less move more that's the usual motto people say right and uh so there's so much more than that to actually get things working yeah um, 
so yes, yeah, so that's why I kind of did it. And, and for me, the results have been fantastic. And I've been lucky enough to then be able to share this with other people as well. And they've had some just beautiful stories. And then the, and the thing for me is the moments that you get afterwards. Like um, there was a chap called Phil. Mm-hmm. I was working with him. He was a, a, a really, really, really successful project manager. He was doing these multi-million pound deals all the way around the world, getting things working for these organizations massively overworked you know about the you know, people get to do the nine till five thing yeah he used to do the five till nine thing seven days a week and that's what technology brought for him it yeah. was just always on never switched off uh, and he was practically on his knees when we started working together and, and he just said the one thing he wanted to do is just spend time with his kids right you know, play with kids and it's like you know it's so heartbreaking when you hear people in, in those kind of positions when they just can't do that yeah. So the moment he sent me a text message that said, I've just done the monkey bars with my boys. It's just fabulous. You think this is this is what life's about. Yeah. I think those moments happen. Oh, definitely. Because you know, when you are overweight, it's very hard to do things. You know, you see people who are overweight, they even have a hard time walking because the the amount of weight pressed on their ankles and their feet make it very hard for them to move around. So when you have a family or you want to do things, you're restricted. You're limited on what you can do because of the excess weight you carry. And that could be very devastating, even emotionally. Oh, massively. And the thing is, though, when you're, when you're in that position, I mean, I went down from what, 154 kilos to 94, so 340 down to 207, is it something? Don't work in pounds mostly. But um, so... When it was at my heaviest, um, I had those same kind of things. And it's silly things like, for example, to get out of bed, you have to kind of roll over onto your side and then kind of shuffle your body around and get your feet over in the right way and then like leverage your body up and hopefully yeah. you get there. Uh, or, or tying shoelaces, you know, you have to kind of, it's almost like a, some weird yoga move you have to kind of do to get these shoelaces tied. But because it creeps up on you slowly and you're constantly adapting, you've got all these... Um, workarounds effectively these yeah. crutches that you create for yourself uh, and and you just don't realize it and it suddenly becomes oh it's, it's okay yeah I, I won't bother going to the theater because the seats are too small but that's normal i don't like going to the theater now or or uh, i'm not gonna go going for a jog or anything because i get out of breath or anything no no I'll, I'll go do something different i'll just go for a walk by the river or something right. and all the it's, and it's those little things that you don't realize you've made compromises all the way through yeah uh, these little coping mechanisms creep in yeah now what did you do what was your first step you know, because you you obviously weren't happy with yourself. So you knew you needed to make a change. You wanted to make a change. You saw other people in society that you wanted to be like, that you wanted to one day maybe, you know, maybe have their, you know, their outside, you know, their ability to be thin or and be able to walk around and run with your kids and so forth. What was step one? Like, how did you start? Because people, you know, I hear people going from one diet to the next diet to the next diet, and they can't lose a pound. They try everything or they lose it and they gain it right back. So, yeah. you know, what's your advice to people? Like step one, what do they do? It's all about your values. It is hundred uh, percent. Everything that you do always starts in your head. You know, every 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 emotion creates a thought. Every thought creates an action, and every action has a reaction. You know, so see, so if you don't sort those out, then it's game over. Because the thing is, with a lot of what people try and do for losing weight or, or getting fitter, they see it as being a transactional thing. So, you know, I'll I will make a New Year's resolution, and I will be fit in three months or something. And after three right. months, then what am I going to do? I'm going to go on holiday or something or oh, that's that's the other classic one. No, i'm gonna get i'm gonna get beach ready to go on holiday and they go on holiday and what they do they just stuff themselves stupid and drink tons of beer um no maybe that was just me i don't know um, <laughs> but, but that, that, that's the thing you, you kind of do these 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 transactional moments but actually it's not a transaction it's it's a lifestyle and, and to do that you've really got to understand what it is that you value in life you know what fundamentally gets you up in the morning? And I, and I don't mean the alarm clock or yeah. some kind of, you know, you've been to some one of these personal development type of things and the turn around and says, 4 a.m., you've got to give a 4 a.m., you've got to do 30 burpees and read 20 <laughs> books and journal and affirmations and blah, blah, blah. No, no, it's just what fundamentally 
gets you out of bed in the morning, makes you do what you do. And, you know, for, yeah. for me, it, is, it was literally those three key things. You know, I was realizing that my family means so much to me. You know, that motivates me more than anything else. My friends mean so much to me and my clients and getting results for them mean so much to me fundamentally. That's why I get out of bed every morning. Right. You know, to, to fulfill one of those three things and you will always do things for your top three values if you write a list of like 10 20 things each day yeah you know, you'll only get the top three done and the top three will be the ones that actually mean something to you right so you know did you like did you change your eating habits like how you went from because you i saw a picture of you and you show your your shorts of what you used to be and it's like wow oh my god how did he do it i'm like i'm i was amazed when you were holding up your old mm -hmm. shorts and i see your body composure and and the way you look now and i'm like oh, it's amazing you know mm -hmm. how you know what did, how did you like you know what were your eating habits and your exercise habits and so forth yeah, I'll, I'll just divert slightly onto the shorts for a moment just to make you smile a bit further. So I bought those shorts while we were in Florida. And um, so there's a picture of me by the Harry Potter train at Universal Studios wearing those shorts. <laughs> uh, just to prove actually that I, they, are, they are actually shorts I was wearing. Um, and I was so proud because they were 48 inches, what they said on the label, even though it was a 54 inch waist. <laughs> Those little lies you tell yourself is those crazy things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, the, the number one thing was just, um, it was actually increasing the amount of food I was eating. Mm -hmm. right? And it is so counterintuitive uh, yeah. to what everyone tells you to do because everyone tells you the same thing. Eat less, move more. Eat less, move more. Yeah. No. That's the thing you hear yeah. all the time. Yeah, it's, it's eat the right things for your body. Right, <laughs> you know, right. You, you could actually be starving yourself and therefore depressing your metabolism, causing all sorts of irreparable damage yes. uh, simply by the fact of eating less. So it's it's eating right. right. So I, I went from having like three meals a day where I really was, uh, I think I depressed my calorie down to about 1400 calories at one point. It was ridiculously low for the person of my size. I'm yeah. six foot two. So um yeah, wow. it's, it's just not right. Um, so, yeah, first thing we did, increase the calories, change the macro split, move it to like six meals a day. Uh, even simple things like, you know, realizing that any food substance you put in your mouth, your body's just going to see as as food. It's going to see it as fuel. Yeah. It's going to break it down into its, its component building blocks, and it's going to utilize them as such. Right. Whether you take that food from being, I don't know, a, a nice meal that you've prepared or a chocolate bar. Right. The choice is yours. Your body's still just going to break it down. Right. And if your body doesn't know what it is, it stores it because, yeah. it, you know, if it can't break it down and it doesn't know what it is, it usually stores it. And people don't realize that, you know, because if, if your body's not getting the message, is this a protein, a nutrient, this, that, you know, it just stores it. And then all the toxins build up in your body too, you know. Yeah. It's hard though to change, you know, people, you know, find it very hard, especially when you're used to a routine, you're used to eating this and you're used to eating that. And then all of a sudden you're going from three humongous meals and all these snacks down to like six, probably small, normal size, you know, like what a Weight Watchers portion would be, you know, and you know, you're going from one extremity to the next. It was like, how did you do that? Cause that, that takes a lot of discipline to do that. Yeah, um, the meals probably weren't as small as you think. So, for example, <laughs> really, the, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so again, it's 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 understanding you know, what it is that you're eating. So you, okay. you you've got you can you you've got three basic macronutrients: proteins, fats, carbohydrates. Yeah, uh, but you've also then got fiber, which most people don't really think about. No. So, if you think about you know how can you eat good quality meals etc and yeah. feel full and sustained afterwards it's making that right kind of combination so if you had a I don't know, for example most of the time a, a protein portion for me is about the size of my fist right yeah so that that would be about it so it's, it's a, a good what eight six ounce eight ounce steak yes would be that. Um, mm -hmm. similar sorry, size of a chicken breast maybe yeah um so it's not a small portion per se. right um and then when you start adding on top of there for example lots of green vegetables and things so you know, your broccolis your cabbage and all sorts of things like that most of those have a very small uh, trace amount of carbohydrates and it's mainly all um dietary fiber 
uh, and therefore it helps make you feel fuller. It helps your digestion. It helps get your gut back to uh, biome correct. All those kind of lovely things can happen. So as, as daft as it sounds, if you've automatically started to fill your pay, plate up in that kind of proportions, and then you add on whatever else you're going to pop in there, whether it's going to be uh, uh, the fats that you're going to have in there, or you're going to have a, a portion of carbohydrates in there, depending on again what you what your aims are, what what right. you're looking to try to do at that point. Um, then that it's not always as small as you think it might be. Right. Uh, and especially when you think, you don't have to cal- calculate, you know, every single macro that you eat when you're looking at things like green veg. Right. I mean, broccoli, for example, or spinach or yeah. uh, <laughs> or asparagus. Because it's, right. it's such a small quantity of, of impact, you've got, you might as well just have what, what it takes to get yourself full. And right. it works. And what about snacks? Because that's where people, a lot of times, they think they're eating a healthy snack and they're actually eating... You know, some of those granola bars can be deathly oh. and they, people think that they're healthy, but then you look in the back and it's like, it's not that healthy. <laughs> oh, dreadful. I love that yogurt. That's the one that always gets me. That's, <laughs> it's, it's like, that, that's the worst marketing ploy anyone's ever come up with. Cause it's like, they've got to replace the fat that they've taken out of the milk, this thing that's just normally there with something else. So what do yeah. they do? They stick sugar in it. Yeah. Like everyone thinks it's low fat. Yes, it's low fat. It's now high carb. It's even worse for you because it's going to spike your insulin, cause all sorts of things that happen there. It's going to impact your liver. And what uh, for? You know, because exactly. you think it's going to be better for you. Yeah, dreadful. <laughs> So what do you suggest if people have a craving or a little snack or they're starting to feel that, you know, their, their energy levels start to drop? What do you suggest to people to do when, if they're in, if they need a little something or they're craving a little something, what's the best well, option? If they find the craving something, um, then look at what it actually is uh, and mm-hmm. see how you can incorporate into your diet. Because most things you should be able to incorporate into your diet. I mean, it's just they're all basic building blocks yeah. so like for example a lady i was working well i still am working with she was wonderful um and she loves greek salad absolutely loves greek salad so yeah. it's like we were going through all different types of things she could do with me and she just says how can we get feta cheese on the menu <laughs> you know, it's not a problem we can work it out because you know it, mm. it isn't a problem you just look at what what is the makeup of feta cheese you know when when right. could she usually have fats in the diet what what would make a good day for that that would make her feel fuller and happier and it fits in with the activities that she's doing at that point in time so nothing should be off the menu. And if, for example, if you like peanut butter or something, you know, utilize it. It's a great source of fat, especially if you get um, proper, um, so, uh, uh, not fully processed peanut butter and stuff. It's right. brilliant for you. Go for it. That's an excellent idea. And how do people know if they're, when they're, when they're putting, the, you say you can eat, you know, a good amount of food. You don't have to count the calories, look at the portions, as long as you're eating the right foods. So is that basically your, your thing is that, you know, you break out, you break the food throughout the day, eat what you want, but, but make sure they're low in sugar, not overly, you know, saturated with, with bad fats and stuff like that. And you still could have a normal lifestyle and eat healthy and not have yeah. to feel like you're restrictive to things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And they see, cause as soon as the thing is, you, 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 your brain's crazy because actually you, your brain cannot process negatives at all. It's impossible. Okay. It cannot do it. So, for example, if I say to you, do not, under any circumstances, think of a blue elephant. Right. The first thing you've done is thought of a blue elephant because you can't yes. think of not think about it without actually thinking about it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as you go into this position of saying people do not, under any circumstances, eat what was it the 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 nut bar things yeah yes 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 yeah We're do not under any circumstances eat nut bars so what they're going to be thinking about all day don't eat nut bars don't eat nut bars the only thing their brain's thinking is nut bars nut bars nut bars, nut bars. i mean what's the first thing they're going to do reach for a nut bar yeah exactly exactly so take the negatives away so rather than saying actually don't you, you don't eat this don't eat that you say you can eat this you can eat that you can eat whatever you want really um and these are kind of the things that you want to do around it and then find out how you fit it into their diet so it works for them. Now, what about exercise? Like, especially when you're overweight, it's very hard to exercise because you get tired very quickly. Or like we said, it's hard sometimes to stand and move body parts, you know, because of the mm-hmm. excess weight. So what do you tell your your clients when they are, you know, starting to, you know, create this whole new way of living? Start slowly. And, uh, you know, 
and this is the other side of it. So everyone says, again, it's the eat less, move more kind of thing that comes out all the time. But actually, you, you're looking for this thing, there's a potential difference, isn't it, between the amount of calories that you're eating versus the amount of calories that you're expending. Yeah. Now, if you can get your body into a position where it's losing weight with lots and lots of calories with very little exercise, then as it starts to plateau out, because you, your body will always go through and it will adjust itself, it will go through uh, laws of specific adaption. Yeah. And it will get to a point where it will say, it's actually, I know how much energy you're going to put in, so I know how much energy um, I'm going to keep at one side effectively, and it leverage itself out. And that says, that's how much muscle we're going to give you, because that's your metabolism now. So yeah. you might say, okay, well, I want a bit more muscle, so I want to increase my metabolism. So you increase the amount of exercise by providing more stimulus. And mm -hmm. uh, now that stimulus doesn't have to be three, four, five, six, ten hours in the gym being slogged to death by a like, <laughs> high and it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be like that you know um you can actually just do that utilizing your know, slower methods make the lighter weight work for you uh take your time over these things so you're fighting against gravity on the way up and the way out utilize all three parts of your movement because again most people when they think about for example like resistance training they'll just think about one part of the movement like uh, yeah you look like you take an arm curl, for example, they'll think about you know, how can I fling the weight up as, as, as quickly as I possibly can. Right, uh, right. And, and then that's it. But actually, there's, there's three parts, that movement. You've got the, the contraction piece that you're doing. You've got the hold at the top. And then you've got the extension piece afterwards. And if you're fighting against gravity all the way up slowly and all the way back down, you're going to feel that a lot more than you would do uh, if you're just throwing the weights around. And you see right. it all the time. When you go to yeah. the gym, you see people throwing weights around. It's like, someone's going to lose an eye or something, I'm sure. Now, some people, you know, I, I have so many people I know that have plateaued. Like, they lost a bunch of weight, and then that's it. Whatever they do, whatever they try, you know, that's not their goal. They still want to lose more weight, and they can't. And I'm even a victim of that. Like, I still want to lose another 10 pounds. But my body, for whatever reason, doesn't want to move from the weight it's at. You know, and, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I notice I lose some inches, but I go on the scale and men my mentality says, I want those numbers to go down, even though it might not matter on the scale. But, you know, so many people I talk to, they plateau, even a lot of men I know, they plateau at a certain weight, they're at the gym, they're doing everything they can. And it's like, they can't pass a certain weight. It's like virtually impossible. What happens? Because I know as you, as we get older, our metabolism decreases and it's harder to lose weight as we, as we get older. So what do you tell people like that are in their mid age, you know, you know, us boomers over here, you know, how, what, what do they do? It's just, it's just it's the same thing. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm part of that same generation. So you know, we're not, we're, <laughs> I know exactly what you're going through. Uh, and, and you, you will do, you know, it's just part of it. It's part of getting older. Yeah. Um, and, and part of it is a case of not getting obsessed by the numbers on the scale. You know, because yeah. you know, it, it, if you, if you're doing the right actions, and and you you feel good when you're doing it and you can see the result for yourself then you'll start to hear other people saying and comment about you know how well you look right and i think that's going to be part of that whole process but you're right we've been kind of brought up in a way that everyone obsesses about the yes. this number on the scale yeah um, so you kind of got to move that mentality away and think actually if, if i'm looking good i'm healthy i'm doing the things i want to do uh, i can fit into the dress size that, that makes me look really great right not that i wear that many dresses okay just in case you're <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the whole point is you know that is a much better measure yeah than actually look at the scales but if you do find that you are plateauing out then it's just utilize that law of, of adaption again so mm -hmm. all all of the plateaus telling you is the amount of activity you've got and the amount of food that you've got has now got to the point where it's actually about you, equilibrium. So yes. you need to make a change. You know? and, the, and the change isn't always decreasing food. Okay. The change might be actually saying, right, well, let's increase the food again, spike it, decrease your activity again. So you've, you've given it a bigger gap and your body's going to go, oh, what's going on here then? Yeah. And then as you start to like increase the activity again, you can start to potentially decrease the food again oh okay now people so just, oh go ahead finish what you're saying 
I was just saying, just just use the laws of specific adaption to kind of help you along that way. It's just just old good old Darwin and his theory of evolution. We're constantly trying to evolve. We're constantly trying to survive. That's what yeah. our body is designed for. Now, I know so many people and especially women, you know, even men, belly fat, one of the hardest things to lose and takes the longest. Everything else around us drops, but that belly fat is almost virtually, it's a struggle for everybody. How Do you have any advice for people who struggle with belly fat that, you know, they just want to get that belly fat off, but they, no matter what they do, they're losing in all the other parts of their body, but that belly fat just wants to hang on and say, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here, you know? <laughs> just perseverance is that one, unfortunately. There's no kind of magic cream or, or special diet or anything. It, your, your body is designed to store fat. And for, for men, it's predominantly around the stomach. For women, genetically, it's predominantly around like thighs, arms, etc so yeah. it's it's just part of our genetic makeup and you know that's the one thing we we can't really change not today yet medical science hasn't quite got that good we've got dolly the sheep but that's probably about it right um but eventually we might be able to but not today so things like for example um your age you can't change uh, the biological sex that you were born with you can't change that's just part of your genetic makeup your genetics you can't change yeah um but other things that you can change. So, you know, you can, you can change, you know, the lifestyle you're living, you can change the rest that you give your body. So for example, one reason why a lot of people plateau out is they don't actually give themselves enough rest. So they don't give the body the time it needs to recover. Right. You know, and, and especially if you're going hard with things like resistance training or, or, or running or anything, you, you, you need to have that period afterwards for your, your muscles to repair. Right. And, and if you don't give it that period, it's just going to, degrade and break down even quicker right so you're actually hurting yourself by not giving yourself time to rest so someone shouldn't every single day be working out at the gym you know two three hours if they're a nut and they're in the gym all the time they got to give themselves a day or two or, or whatever mm -hmm. to recover and let the body recover itself yeah and different muscles take different parts of time to uh, recover so, you know, so if, for example, you know, most of your core muscles, you can probably recover within a day if you've yeah. given a really hard session, probably even half an hour for some people. Um, arms recover quite quickly. Legs take a little bit longer. Back and shoulders take a bit longer. And have and you ever just... talked to your clients about like, I'm sorry to interrupt you, about the stigmatism because our society, we're going through like changes now. First, you know, um, being skinny was it. Everybody was going nuts trying to be skinny. Now we're, we're changing and they're saying being obese, being overweight is beautiful. And they're trying to, you know, they're putting, you know, heavy set models. They're, you know, they're encouraging people that it's okay. Now, don't you think that would kind of make people less motivated? Oh, it's okay so I don't have to do anything. Does it break down just feeling what you feel about yourself? Keep focusing. Do you like yourself as a person? Or what do you tell these people that, well, everybody else is doing it? Because a lot of times people are just followers and not leaders. So what do you have to say about that? It's an interesting one because, you know, people have the right to do to their body whatever they want, really. You know, as long as that, that's really it. And as long as they're happy. I think that's got to be one of the kind of key things and and driving to, to happiness is 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 a great goal because actually when you're happy your body works a lot better um you, you end up being able to uh, anabolize more more muscles more repair yourself better you'll have less chances of getting colds and illnesses and various other things uh, whereas when you're unhappy and you're stressed that's when your body's catabolizing a lot more. It's constantly in the position of breaking down. You're going to yes. feel that you're going to be tired and fatigued because it's expecting that saber-toothed tiger any second to jump out and eat you, basically, <laughs> is, is what your body's getting ready for. Yeah. Um, so as long as you're kind of aiming for that being happier, you you will be better than being unhappy. Right. And I think the issue is, is when people kid themselves. Yeah. I think, actually, I, I am happier being bigger. And I think if that is, if they truly are happier, great, no worries. But if, if it is a case that they are, they are lying to themselves. And it is a dangerous, dangerous thing is that lying to yourself. Yeah. Because if you cannot trust yourself, who on earth in this world can you trust? Exactly. Very um, good point. And and so if you, if you are lying to yourself thinking, actually, I am happier in the way I am, then it's, you know, it, that, that's when you're going to find the problems already start and uh that, that it's gonna be difficult for you to turn that that around because it's about that accepting you know where you are what is that you want to do 
you know, I'm, I mean, 2014 was a wake up call for me. I was sleepwalking into being obese, morbidly right. obese. My doctor was not very happy with me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we had one or two conversations, <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, you, you, but you do, you, you, you might wake up one morning and think, oh my God, what the hell happened to me? And five years have passed where well, you've just been busy. Yeah. Uh, but then having that kind of realization it's then what do you do about it and you know 2019 could have been a big turning point for me if i hadn't have met pete at that point in time i may have actually just surrendered and said actually you know okay i'm going to make the most out of life can have i would have had a happy life don't get me wrong i would have made everything possible to make that happen but right it, it might not might, might have ended a slightly different way than i'm hoping it's going to end now now how long did it take you to lose the weight because like you know you see people trying to market fat weight loss diets and this and that and you know nothing nothing ever comes fast if something good is going to come about to me it takes time and effort what do you think oh, how definitely. long did it take you so my first uh, 10 kilograms so that's 22 pounds that that was uh took me three months 12 weeks okay uh the next three months i dropped out another seven kilograms um basically just kept doing that for about 18 months uh i went down from 154 down to 94 wow in total so that was the 340 down to 207 um i think it's 207 it's not like that pounds. yeah yeah um and yeah uh so i, I was really pleased on that i wasn't and, and this is this is where again the human mind's an awful thing right mm -hmm. because I, I set a goal and uh, a friend of mine got me on stage he made me publicly declare and all sorts of things i'll get him back for one day um, <laughs> and he says he goes so what, what's your what's your goal and i was there going uh not too sure and I, was, I did a bit of a calculation when i was when i used to do canoe slalom and things i i was weighing in at 88 kilograms so i says 88 kilograms I think he's very proud of himself. I managed to answer his question uh, on the spot there. And then he goes, and, and when are you going to get that done by? And it was like, okay, quick bit of math. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I now? Where do I need to be? I've just lost 10K in a month. Let's say I can't do that all the time. So I, I gave myself like two years. So get, get down to 88 kilos. And uh, anyway, 18 months down the line, got down to 94. And I was kicking myself six kilograms over. It's like, <laughs> and I was a sore head. And, and then my wife goes, you do realize you've lost over 10 stone, Martin. Mm. And it's wow. like, whoa, that's like a whole person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, 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 you know, until that point when somebody else kind of points these things out, sometimes you can get buried in your own kind of head as to where you are and what's going on. With things. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, it's, it's sometimes, you know, fantasy and desire versus reality is two different things. And sometimes we get caught with the desire and the fantasy and we forget you know in the real life you know we have to look realistically like you said you lost a whole person that's huge that's huge <laughs> yeah. you know and i i give you kudos for that I, you know now you do coaching correct and you like what what services do you provide to people that want to you know learn how to you know lose weight and 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 be able to maintain that weight loss yeah, well, I work with some um, quite amazing um, like consultants and business owners and things. Um, and that's the reason why is because that's, you know, who I am. It's, right. I've, I've been growing up with doing that for like decades. So I know the kind of trials and tribulations that go through and all the kind of pitfalls and pit stops and all those other bits that are going to trip them up and things. So I can really um, give them some benefit of my knowledge over the years because uh, part of it is you know you'll you'll go to college you'll get the the various different qualifications you'll learn the stuff about the different scientific methods and the studies and things that are going on today because it's always changing um but actually a lot of it's down to you know the how do you apply it in real life yeah uh, because you know theoretical knowledge is great but actually taking something and saying okay you are working seven in the morning on your first call you'll finish at maybe eight o'clock at night you'll have a brown bag lunch how on earth are you going to train you know the gyms don't open until 7 30 and they usually right. close in yeah uh, how, how are you going to prepare for it what were you going to do for your meals how, and so I, t I tend to work with people that were similar to me uh just similar because i can i can help them a lot more uh, i don't think i'd be as good trying to train my son or something like that he's he's a different generation <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd love to but to be frank he bounces around much more than i do um, 
So, uh, yeah, uh, so I tend to work with people like that. And then it is breaking it down into kind of six key areas, really, for them. So, like I said to you before, step number one, really work on your mindset, get that nailed down, understand what's going to happen there. Uh, step two is just really, uh, it's very mechanical. It's meals and, and movement, really. You know, what, what, what is your diet going to look like? And what kind of exercise plan are we going to put together? What you, what, how is that going to meet your goals that you set in your mindset type of elements of it? Uh, how is that going to work with your values? How is that going to really work with your schedule? And that brings in like the step next step, which is about method. Uh, so it's building a method that works for you. Uh, and, and that's kind of one of the key things that most people don't realize and i have a really simple mantra is if it isn't in the diary it doesn't get done yeah <laughs> and, and that works really well with busy business people yes yes <laughs> yeah. yes mm -hmm. so if they get in the diary it's fine uh, no no and, and and it makes it one of those non-negotiables as well uh, and it's like with the the old analogy of um I can't remember what, what professor was it that did it in front of his class where he got that um, um, beaker full of, of, of nothing and he put he said okay if I fill this with sand all the, all the minor things in life what's going to happen it gets full and but if I put the big rocks in then and put the smaller rocks etc mm -hmm. so the, the, these bits are the big rocks it's the things that you don't want to move non-negotiables because those are high in your values right uh, and then we do things like you know when we're doing these things are scheduling we also schedule in rest and relaxation you know what are you going to do for that last hour of the day right you know, get off your phone stop doing emails you know that that yeah. last piece of the message can wait right you know, how Definitely. are you going to unwind and relax because you, your body will go from you know nothing to i'm screaming out of here because some saber tooth tiger is going to try and run after me in about a heartbeat but it takes time for it to relax and yes. slow down and get into that repair state yes. so if you don't give it that time then it's never going to be in that position. And, and again, that whole stress element really kind of drives a lot of the problems. So yeah, yeah. we'll look at how do you schedule in some of that moderation. Uh, and that kind of helps with thinking about, for example, how do you pe how do people reward themselves as well? Mm -hmm. Because we've grown up in a society where food's big. And, and I don't think people realize consciously how big it is to everything. So for example, you're going to celebrate something what you're going to do is the probability is you go out for a meal or you go out for a beer you know, right what happens to birthdays birthday cake what happens to wedding wedding cake what happens at christmas christmas cake yeah you know, it's, it's it's and it's just part of of everyday life now it is yeah. it's the initial thing we reach to if we want to go for a celebration oh it's uh you've done really well at school let's go take you out for a meal or something we'll have a barbecue or you know whatever else is going to be happening right um so what other things could you do that might not necessarily be food oriented that you could do so for example um go do some mini golf or, or crazy golf as we say over here yeah or uh, go bowling or go swimming or go for a walk or right. go take your better half to a beautiful spa day you know yeah get, get brownie points for that one at the same time <laughs> you'll get bonus points for sure <laughs> yeah kudos absolutely 100 <laughs> percent. but all the, these little things again it's, it's just nobody thinks about them up front so you, you start to think about those and put them into being part of your your method and, yeah. and your moderation piece then straight away rather than reaching for that thing that might cause you more damage you reach for something that's going to cause you more good right and, and it's like uh, you, you read the have you read anything by james clear about the habit stuff the, the habit oh, stuff what yeah yeah so so james clear does a, a book called, called atomic habits oh okay okay good, good book definitely worth read uh so again one of the kind of key concepts it has in there is about you know making what's bad for you harder to do making what's easy for you easier to do and it's right really good for you easier to do so yeah, yeah so things like you know if, if you if you like a glass of wine every now and again or a couple of beers then leave them in the shop then if you mm. really 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 want one you have to get up out of your seat go to the shop purchase whatever it is come back and all of that effort might be thinking i really can't bother with that but if yeah. it's one of those events where you think actually i'm going to do this because of whatever then you would put the effort in to do it right yeah and same with making the easy things. So if you've got lots of nice activities that you can do rather than eating Christmas cake or something, yeah. then straight away it becomes easier. And then the final piece uh, is we work on monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, which is one thing that people either don't do, do badly, <laughs> or misinterpret somewhere yeah. on the lines. And the scales like we were talking about earlier was an absolute classic one. 
Um, because everyone's kind of grown up with this idea. You must you must weigh a certain amount, you must get on the scales, and you must measure every single day, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And and there's so many misowners with that. Um, so for example, um the pull of gravity on the earth is different wherever you are. Yes. And so you you could weigh yourself in one place and weigh yourself somewhere else. And not, nothing else might have changed other than the fact of your location. You wear two different values, but yet you this you are still the same person, right? You're right, you exactly. Uh, and the same with things like water retention. Water retention is great. So if you do a lot of traveling or anything, you're going to retain more water. If you yes. eat certain things, you're going to retain more water. Every every liter of water is worth a kilogram. That easily adds up before you know it. You just put on two, three, four, five kilograms, and it's nothing more than you drinking tea or something. Yes. And yeah, uh, but most people then be obsessing about it. It's like, oh my god, the the scales have just said I put three kilograms on this week. No, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's you metabolizing that? No, it's not going to happen. So <laughs> again, getting people to realize you know when to do it, how to do it, and not the, the fact that you're not looking to get an absolute value in that moment you're looking for a trend over time yeah and, that, and that's the key thing and you know all of our bodies change you know yes. and, but women know this probably better than men on a on a monthly basis kind of thing we know i think kind of happens you're going to have weeks where you're going to feel more stronger weeks where you're going to feel not as strong weeks where right. you're going to feel more emotional and things men have the same things too um we don't tend to admit to them quite as much um mm-hmm. But, you know, that's what happens. Our bodies are constantly changing all the yes. time. So if we haven't learned a method of monitoring what's going on, but some some objective measures, you know, like scales, you know, potentially uh, fat calipers, maybe tape measures, whatever kind of way you're going to do it. Yeah. Plus some subjective measures, you know, how are you right. feeling? You know, what went really well this week? What didn't go quite as well? Right. You know, how can you make things work even better for you? Right. How are you going to celebrate those things that went really well? And, and and kind of taking note of them and really kind of championing them through. Right. You know, I also, like, I have so many friends that have to travel in their job. It requires them to go from one place to the next place to the next place. And, you know, when you have constantly eating out at restaurants, how do you avoid not putting on those pounds? And how do you, how can you lose weight when you're constantly traveling and you're constantly eating food? Because you know they're pouring on the butter, they're pouring on the olive oil, and it's like it's a death trap, you know, basically. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's just where it comes down to good selection, really, and being prepared where you can. Um, there's going to be those days when it's just not going to happen, uh, not going to happen for one reason or another. You're going to be stuck. You're going to be in the wrong place, wrong time. Just do what you need to do if right. it's a case you know you're you're in a position where actually you've got you've got nothing on you you're feeling hungry you 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 know you're due a meal that now yeah grab yourself whatever it is that it takes if it's a a, a, a nova scotia locks bagel or something like that go for it you know if mm-hmm. that's what you've got available at that point in time don't make yourself feel guilty about it you know, it's a it's it's a that moment thing. It's what you needed to get through that day at that point. It's not yeah. what defines you. It's right. not what you do every day. And the reality is, if that's the only thing you do all week that you've done off of your plan to your target things, it's going to have no impact, right? Or such a small impact. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's the big thing. Worrying about it, stressing about it, getting anxious about it, all those kind of negative things that cause that turmoil with your hormones and everything, that's going to cause you so much more damage than that yeah. one tiny indiscretion. It's true. It's true. Now, do you do online coaching services? Like, can someone, you know, from let's say the states, contact yeah. you and get the help? And now, what's your website? Where can people contact you? Yeah, my website's martinsharp.com. Okay. Yep, make it real easy. <laughs> <laughs> and so people can, you know, get your services. Do you have any books or any type of things that you offer besides the coaching? Yeah, I've done a number of books and things. So people can welcome to, to grab those. I've co-authored a number of books as well, both in business and in health. So those are available. I've got all sorts of PDFs and things that people can grab hold of. Uh, I also do like a, an, uh, an online morning. Well, it's morning for me. I think it could be a like late evening for you guys. Uh, <laughs> class, so it's 7.30. Well, it's going to be 6.30 going forwards because everyone's uh, saying they prefer to have it before the school starts, really, the school run. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be 6.30 going forwards. So that's... 
your seven. Oh, yeah, you, you might squeeze it in. I think it'd be about half past eleven at night for you. So just okay. before you go to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do that as like a as just a, it's a bit of a free online thing where we just get together, we have a bit of a chat, we talk about um health, fitness, we do a bit of exercise, keeps people moving, keeps people motivated. That Excellent. works quite well. And can we get your books on your website or are they on Amazon? Where are your books? They're all on Amazon are the books. So yeah, you can get them there. So um you're welcome to if you if you search my name, um you'll come it comes up. I've got an author central page, so you can get them there. Or oh, links are available on the Martin Shout website as well, so that makes it even easier. <laughs> now you're it's it's Martin, is it it's sharp S H A R P or is it just that's the correct That's spot. correct, yes. So okay. it's, I had a dyslexic ancestor, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure. You know, it's been a pleasure having you. And thank you so much for all this valuable information. You know, um, everybody go to uh, martinshop.com. He has great information. He has a ton of books to offer. And thank you so much for, you know, taking your time to help people because this is something that people worldwide struggle with. And, you know, I'm, you know, lots of people want to lose weight, but they just don't know how because they try everything. And we're bombarded with all these different types of diets every month. There's a new diet, a new phase, a new trend. And it's really about everything you've just talked about. And, you know, um, thank you very much for, you know, helping people understand that it's not these, these trends, these diet fads, they're not going to work. It's a lifestyle change and it's really, you know, working on yourself and it's not going to be a one, two, three thing. It's going to take time, but you're the, you're the proven knowledge, you know, look at you, you, you're, you did, you did a total turnaround. So He's the proof, everybody, you know, come on, you know, you, you know, this is no joke. You know, you, you've done amazing job losing the weight and you look terrific. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much for everything.